circle and solid defense in the outfield and Rachel Lewis is that rare combination of both true speed and power look to her to be aggressive on the base paths as she leads the Big Ten in stolen bases from Lexington it's the Wildcats as both the home and the visiting team they've got the same goals and seven innings to get there the first step of the journey is just moments away The NCAA Softball Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Just a tick under 80 degrees today in Lexington. Let's take a look at our Capital One starting lineup for the Northwestern Wildcats. Now, while we won't see the same team power like we will with the other three teams in this region, Morgan Newport's their team leader, with power, 10 home runs, 38 runs knocked in. And when Rachel Lewis gets on, look for her to be on the move. A Big Ten best, 28 stolen bases for Lewis. As this starting nine goes up against Autumn Humes in the circle for Kentucky. Oh, she has been the workhorse all season long for the Wildcats. And you're going to see a very experienced pitcher in the circle. He works with a down in the zone with a drop ball, curveball combination. Also has an effective off speed. She can now throw on any count. And most important, she is one of the most competitive players on the Wildcat team. The grad student who started out her career at Division II Harding University in Arkansas, her home state. She spent her freshman season there. She'll be off to Eastern Kentucky for nursing school in the fall, but there's plenty of business to be taken care of in the meantime as the postseason will get underway for Kentucky and Northwestern with Skylar Schellmeyer stepping into the box and off we go from Lexington. Beautiful weather in Lexington. No rain in the forecast, 77 degrees here at first pitch as things get started with the junior stepping in. The Wildcats come in after a season where they finished third in the Big Ten and reaching the postseason for the third straight year. Michelle Meyer is a little bit of lightning in a bottle as the leadoff hitter. The outfield for Kentucky playing in a little bit. Just two extra base hits on the season for Michelle Meyer. So they're really trying to shorten the field, cut down the outfield. You know, they're, they're going to take their chances. Try to take away that blue pit, that soft single, right between the infield and outfield. They call her the battery. She puts it all out there for them as the spark at the top. And first team all Big Ten this year. And moved her to the leadoff spot about the middle of the year. Gives them that triple threat. And hitting 362. Finished fourth in the Big Ten. Humes ahead to start. The slapper to shortstop is bobbled by Koffel. And Shellmeyer, a speedy threat, is aboard at first base to start things off for Northwestern. And it appears as though she was out of the box. And so she's been called out. One mistake erases another. Oh, just for Northwestern, talk about a momentum shift. Koffel has to move to her right. And anytime you have to move, that's going to allow Shellmeyer to be safe. But watch the left foot of Shellmeyer as it crosses toward home plate, steps on the chalk line. That is an illegally batted ball, immediately a dead ball. And what a difference. A shift in momentum early in this game as Shellmeyer is called out. So Coach Drohan is out there to have a conversation with Brett Higgins, the second base umpire, in her 20th season at the helm and 14th postseason trip as the head coach. One away now for Rachel Lewis. Unanimous selection, first team all Big Ten this year. So she and Sheldmeyer among top ten 
in the Big Ten in hitting as she went 351, good for sixth in the league this year. And her 28 stolen bases also tops in the league. Was only caught once this year. Goes after the 1-1 one -one and sends that out of play. A ball and two strikes from Hughes. And Lewis is just so difficult to defend. She can bun her way on base. You talked about her elite speed, her ability to steal bases, number one in the Big Ten in that category, but she also has tremendous power, can drive the ball deep in the gaps. She didn't flash as much of it this year as she has throughout the course of her career. She's hit as many as 17. She tattooed those in her freshman year, and seven of them this year. The plenty of postseason experience under her belt as she skies the 2-2 for Abernathy, drifting in from center field, and the first two retired to start things off for Northwestern. Hume's in the circle, the only one of Kentucky's four seniors to use that extra year of eligibility due to COVID, as the others either went on to grad school or had a job lined up in the working world. And here is Jordan Rudd steps in, quickly nothing and one. And these are both very experienced teams, Northwestern and Kentucky, just one true freshman in the starting lineup combined between both teams. And that's Koffel at shortstop for Kentucky. Rudd with a drive out to the gap. A one-hopper off the fence. She is in the second base standing up. A hard liner out to left center. And a two-bagger for the Northwestern catcher. Jordan Rudd shows you her power. This pitch is on the outer half of the plate, but she gets full extension and is still able to pull the ball all the way to the left center field gap. And Northwestern finds themselves with a runner in scoring position early in the game. And it's been a great year for Morgan Newport, hitting now for Northwestern. And she set a bunch of career highs in average, in slugging, in homers, runs batted in, and OPS. Second team all Big Ten for the do-it-all grad student from DeKalb, Illinois. And this is right where Northwestern wants Newport to be, tied for second on the team in two out RBIs. She's been able to get it done in clutch situations all season long for Northwestern. Two one on the hands and pop foul. Not a lot of room for Kowalik to work with there behind the plate. Leading the team in those power categories and with Shellmeyer and Lewis and Rudd getting on base ahead of her. Tops on the team and runs knocked in as well. Oh, so far, Humes is having a lot of good fortune going up in the strike zone against Newport. Newport not able to stay on top of the ball. So important for Humes to keep spinning the ball through the zone. As you mentioned, if you know that go up in the zone, if that ball flattens out, Newport has the type of power to knock it out of the ballpark. Rudd at second with a two-out double. As Humes recycles through the signs with Kowalik and gets Newport to pop it to left. Long drift for Koffel from short, and the inning is over. Rudd stays at second, and Kentucky coming to the plate for the first time.
Northwestern scoreless top one. Here comes Kentucky and our starting lineup for the Wildcats brought to us by Capital One. Kayla Kowalik at the top, all SEC second team as she pillaged her way to the top of the batting charts this year. She's hit lead off in every game for UK. Four players in the lineup for Rachel Lawson with at least 10 home runs led by the freshman in the cleanup spot, Erin Koffel. And quite a formidable opponent in the circle, the California native, Danielle Williams, pitching for Northwestern. Oh, they go with the lefty, and you are going to see a pitcher that can work all pitches, all quadrants. She can move the ball through the zone with a great deal of spin and locates the ball very well. But the changeup is her difference maker. When that pitch is on, it can be devastating to hitters. Kayla Kowalik more often than not has been devastating to opposing pitchers this year. The junior from Texas ready to go. Comes in on a 32 game on base streak. The longest ever at Kentucky. And her power has really surged this year. Up to 12 home runs after in her first two seasons not sending one over the fence. I mean, she came into this program as a tremendous athlete, and she has worked and worked and worked and has really become a, an overall outstanding softball player, tremendous catcher on defense. But as you mentioned, really has the ability now to drive the ball out of the park. And just gotten a lot stronger, a lot more confident. And the season she has put together on offense is it's just... Uh, you know, eye-opening when you look at those numbers. Rachel Lawson said, uh, as you get it through the fall preceding a season and then into early winter, you're starting to figure out what your lineup is going to look like. You have some tweaks and changes here and there. But once you settle in, that's where you are. That's the team you're going to be. And that's where they've been with Kowalik as she started every game at catcher since April 2nd. And she takes upstairs. A great plate appearance to start and a good eye as Kowalik draws the leadoff walk from Williams. Something very rare for Danielle Williams is a walk. Just 33, that is her 34th walk of the season and it's an off-speed pitch. She'll go to that early and often, but it hangs up in the zone, just misses. They'll have to keep a close eye on Kowalik as well. 20 for 22 on the base paths. That is the junior from Henderson, Nevada. Tatum Spangler, their starter in right field. And every game over the last couple series of the regular season and through the SEC tournament gets ready to go. Quite an interesting contrast between Kentucky and Northwestern where take a player like Spangler. She's hit all over the lineup, second, fourth, fifth, sixth, eighth, ninth, wherever they've needed her and has really solidified her spot here is the number two spot which draws great praise from the coaching staff is that bunt is scooped and thrown on to first and Kowalik is into second one down meanwhile for Northwestern today with game number 45 of the season for them they've had seven players who have started every game Mac Dunlap who's playing third base for them has started all but one game this year and so They've known exactly who they want their starting group to be pretty much from day one. And both of these teams are very unique in that their pitchers also hit a variety of them, not just one pitcher hit. So you're able to be creative with that lineup and keep those pitchers in the lineup. Maybe they're starting the game in the hitting only spot, but they're actually in the game. So yes, a very solid lineup for Kentucky, very experienced team for Kentucky. Lauren Johnson, the senior, with Kowalik at second one down. Kentucky this year finished fifth in the SEC. Certainly 
a tough competition to try and finish at the top, trailing Florida and Arkansas, who ended up tied for first, and then Alabama and Missouri ahead of them. And in the SEC tournament, went one and one with a win over Georgia and then a loss to Alabama. And while they saw plenty of non-conference action this year, it's the first game of the season for Northwestern against a non-Big Ten team. Lewis traverses onto the outfield grass and retires Johnson for the second out. Well, this is where Danielle Williams really shines. She is so tough to hit against, very low batting average against, gets a lot of strikeouts per game, but with runners on, opponents are hitting just 163. And that says a lot about a pitcher. When you get a runner in scoring position and you can find ways out of innings, tells me that Danielle Williams really knows how to turn it up a notch when her team needs it the most. One ball, one strike to the freshman shortstop, Aaron Koffel. From Bremen, Indiana, in this regional, the other two teams, Miami of Ohio and Notre Dame, and Bremen, Indiana, about 30 minutes from South Bend. For some freshmen, there can be a steep learning curve getting used to the level of Division I softball, college softball. Koffel on the SEC All-Freshman team this year has broken Kentucky's freshman home run record with 16 of them. And never easy to come in and play the position of shortstop as a freshman as well and not let that affect your offense. As Koffel draws, draws the walk. A lot of times, you know, two of the toughest positions to come in and play Defensively, our catcher and shortstop, a lot of decision making and a lot of busy minds going on out there. But Koffel's been able to handle that. She's maintained her starting role at shortstop. And most important, hasn't taken that defense when she has struggled to her offense where she has been consistent all season long. It's Mallory Payton, the first baseman at the plate for Kentucky. And we're seeing something a little bit anomalous here in the first inning from Dan Danielle Williams is that, as you alluded to earlier, Carol, she's only walked about one batter every four innings this year. But she disappears mm -hmm. that pitch underneath the bat of Peyton to get ahead 0-2. Ah, could be a little nerves out there. You're absolutely right. Typically, Williams right around the strike zone has good command, but she always can go back to that off-speed pitch. Just so effective for her. Soft liner to short Nelson. Has it in the glove and the inning is over. Lead off walk does not come back to bite. Two left to board. I'm king of the mountain. Rachel Lawson, former head coach at Western Kentucky and now 14 years has become the winningest head coach in the history of the Kentucky program. Postseason at UK in every year but her first in 2008. And on the other side in year number 20, it's Kate Drohan, who's got her team in their 14th postseason trip in her 20 years after she took over in 2002. Carol, she replaced a legend at Northwestern. Oh, she replaced Sharon Drysdale, who, who when you think about Northwestern, that's all you used to think about was Sharon Drysdale. Now you think about Kate Drohan. And both Kate Drohan and Rachel Lawson, not only outstanding coaches, they have their programs at the top each and every year, very consistent, also great people, develop their players not only on the field, but off the field as many of their players go on to outstanding careers. And that's a big, important piece of the puzzle for both Coach Lawson and Coach Drohan is making sure to develop the complete person while they're at their institutions. Leading it off, Maeve Nelson with a long shot down the left field line. Goodbye. Lead off long ball, her fifth home run of the year. Northwestern on the board first, one nothing Wildcats.
Maeve Nelson takes the first offering she sees and absolutely crushes this ball. It's up in the zone, and she keeps her barrel elevated up in the zone. It is a no-doubter as Northwestern gets on the board first in the Lexington Regional. That was just a sturdy, confident swing. And off the bat, as long as it stayed fair, there was no question that Nelson would be rounding the bases. She gives way to Chicago native Angela Zedak. He pounds one into the dirt, deep out to short. Koffel sinking throw, scooped by Peyton. And there's the first out here at the top of the second. When you really take a deep dive into this Lexington Regional, you realize how competitive these four teams are with each other. Very evenly matched across the board. And we're seeing that early here. It's gonna, you know, the difference is gonna be, it comes down in the postseason. Of course, you need some solid pitching and some solid defense, but it's that timely hitting. And, and a lot of times riding the momentum, riding that energy and enthusiasm. And, Northwestern has come out on fire here in this first game. Sydney Supley, the sophomore in her first NCAA tournament with her freshman year cut short. Kate Drohan so high on her competitiveness, telling us she's ready for this moment. And Carol, another thing that you pointed out, comparing all the schools in this four-team grouping, some great academic institutions. There are very few transfers among these four teams. Well, it just you know, says a lot about the culture of these programs, but also the prowess of the academic institutions. And, and when you have a player for two years, three years, four years, there's any coach out there now five years with the, the additional eligibility year, when you can build that culture, build that team unity, it goes a long way into success, especially in the postseason. Supley down swinging. For an update on Duke, let's go to the studio. Shea Cornette, what's the latest? Thanks, Mike. Let's take a look at the Athens region. Duke taking on UNC Greensboro. That's Giselle Tapia. It's a sack bunt, but it's overthrown here, and it goes into the outfield. That would bring in Deja Davis as she comes around to score. It's 1-0 Blue Devils, bottom of the first. Let's now take a look at some of the scores from the Tempe region last night. And Cousins, we're sending it back to you. We'll take a look later on. one nothing Northwestern on the strength of a Maeve Nelson solo home run as Northwestern strikes first. And here comes Nikki Cochran with two out and nobody on. Mike Cousins, Carol Bruggeman, the former Division I coach and the executive director of the NFCA. Glad to be with you for the first of two today. We're later on today. We'll see Notre Dame and Miami, Ohio in our second game available for you on the ESPN app. I like Northwestern's approach here, just battling, fouling off pitches. Not, not entirely through the lineup for the first time. Just one strikeout so far for Humes. Just like what I'm seeing, they're swinging early, swinging often, not taking many pitches, really trying to take charge in the box. Scouting a pitcher when you know coming in, especially when there's an ace like Humes, is that something that in a team meeting room might be said to say, all right, we've got to be aggressive early on? Sure, they're going to take a look at the fact that, you know, Autumn Humes does not have a lot of walks either on the season. So if she's right around the strike zone, you know, you want to you want to be in hitters counts more than pitchers counts. You know, hitters counts would be a 2-0, and 3-1. Oh, and one. First good pitch you see may be the best pitch you see of an entire at bat. So why would you let it go? And that is the mentality of Northwestern. Always tougher to hit in pitchers counts. 0-1, oh, 0-2, one, oh, 1-2. Oh, 
Humes ahead, trying to get the chase. Evens it up two and two. Autumn Humes is a pitcher who's been there, done that in the postseason. She's the third pitcher in Kentucky history to win 20 plus games in a season. Well, just think about the amount of what I call pressure innings or stress innings she has thrown, not only in the tough schedule in the SEC this season, but some out of conference tough opponents. They have turned to Humes often. Off the hands and a flare down the line. That's a fair ball. Johnson comes in to retrieve it. And a long battle, the at-bat one there by Cochran for the second straight inning, a two-out Northwestern base hit. Now you may see, say this is a really fortunate hit for Northwestern, gets it off the handle, but I call it taking advantage of some opportunities as Northwestern continues to swing aggressively and swing often in every at-bat. And when you swing, good things happen. Down to the nine spot. Mac Dunlap aggressive. Peyton calls for it and gets called off by Blaine. And the inning is over. The Northwestern gets on the board first with a Maeve Nelson home run. The Wildcats are fired up here in Lexington as they take the lead. First of two games today, we'll see Miami, Ohio, back-to-back -back champions of the Mid-American Conference, one of the most stout offensive teams in the country, and Notre Dame, one of five qualifiers for the postseason out of the ACC. 20 years at the helm for Kate Drohan, and that's been a very good couple of decades for this program. So much success, just know how to get it done at the end of the season. Remember in 2019, they hosted a regional, won their own regional, and advanced to super regionals. No strangers to success. Swinging away to start things off, Renee Abernathy shoots it back through the circle and into center field. A leadoff base hit for the junior center fielder. Expect to see this all day long from these teams, just punching back and forth. Abernathy takes a low pitch, gets her barrel down to the bottom of the zone, drives it right back up the middle. That's right, no surprise to see offense in this regional, which out of the 16 sites around the country, this site has the second highest combined batting average and run total. Throw to second, trying to get the lead runner, and it's dropped at second base. So Northwestern had the right idea, but couldn't execute. Humes is aboard safely at first, and now first and second. Oh, look how tight Dunlap gets on this ball quickly, but Abernathy has too much speed. Even if that ball is caught, she is going to beat that throw. That just shows you right there how aggressive, how much speed through the lineup Kentucky has. They may not have a ton of stolen bases, just 56 on the season, but they run the bases very well with good overall team speed. Ball gets away from Rudd, the throw to third, and Abernathy is safe. The pressure is on in a hurry from the Wildcats. A well, ball in dirt here. This ball just gets away. It's a pass ball from Jordan Rudd. Doesn't squeeze it in time. And you got to love the mentality of Kentucky. Look how balanced on the base pass Abernathy is, ready to read that pitch in the dirt and takes off immediately. And Carol, on a ball that gets out of the catcher's glove to the third base side, that's a, a risky takeoff there to go to third base. Kentucky mightily confident to swipe an additional 60 feet from going sec first and second to second and third, and still nobody out. And I love the aggressive mentality of both teams, Northwestern, trying to get the lead out, unsuccessful on the bunt, but it's a mentality. And on the other side of the ball, you see Kentucky hustling on the bases, taking advantage of the extra base. 
This game it already has that feel. You can tell it's a postseason game. Every pitch, every play, that intensity level, very high. Riley Smith went from looking to lay down a bunt now to trying to drive in a couple of teammates. She's down one and two. And the way Danielle Williams has walked a few batters uncharacteristically already in this game, fallen behind a few batters. I'd love to see her continue to use that off-speed pitch a little more often. Roller up the first baseline, and quick thinking there from Cochran. If she feels that, it's a tie game. And she lets it go foul. Instead, it's a long strike for Smith. Coming into this game, Northwestern is in the top 20 in the country in terms of defensive fielding percentage. And that, as you mentioned, an outstanding decision, reading the spin of the ball, seeing it was going to go foul, and letting it go. They take a lot of pride in their defense. Coach Drohan said, I think we, and I think there's some tongue in cheek, tongue in cheek here, are the best four seed in the history of softball. Liner, foul, beyond the first base bag. But she does make that. a good point with how good this team is in, in a very competitive Big Ten in the top of that league. And to be here in, in this four team group, this is one where you look at it and you go, you know what? This is anybody's regional, this is exciting. And, it was, and it's tough to compare the Big Ten this season. They played a conference-only schedule. And so it is a little difficult to compare. Chopper over the circle and through into center field. Kentucky gets one. And we've got an obstruction call. Well, Riley Smith coming up big, using the ground, just beats this ball, chops it into the ground, goes back up the middle, and how aggressive is Kentucky being on the base pass? This ball is fielded by Shellmeyer on the dirt. But Jordan Rudd, remember, you cannot block the plate. You cannot set up early without the ball and block the base runner from sliding into home. And that obstruction call was very quick from Brandon Bloom, the home plate umpire. Coach Johan wants to go out and talk about that. Once you have the ball, you can block the plate. But prior to receiving the ball, you must give a clear path to the base runner. Carol, on first glance at that, where Rudd was positioned, appeared that she was basically on top of the plate. What does the rule stipulate as far as blocking the base path versus blocking the actual base itself? Yeah, just making sure, you know, we're a catcher. What you'd like to see the catcher is that left foot on the plate, right foot in the field of play a little bit to allow the, the base runner the ability to have an open lane to the base. So if you do not have the ball, you get a look where Rudd is, steps back. That, that obstruction call was actually called before the ball was even released from Shellmeyer. So it plates two for Kentucky to give them the lead. Still nobody out in what has been a topsy-turvy inning. And Smith threatened to take off for third there as well, keeping Rudd on her toes behind the plate. Oh and two here on Stoddard. <laughs> Upstairs and over Rudd's head, and there goes Smith easily into third. Now Danielle Williams really trying to settle into this game. Just eight wild pitches coming into this game. That's her ninth. We've seen a couple walks from her. And right now, her quicker pitches are not 
fooling Kentucky, but she has a big difference maker in her off-speed pitch. She may have to go to that more often, even a couple times per hitter. One-two comes inside, and that plunks Stoddard. So Kentucky has brought four batters to the plate here. Two have scored, and they're on the corners. Well, we've seen quite a few things not go in Danielle Williams' favor. A hit by pitch, a wild pitch, couple walks just one time through the lineup. And right now, Northwestern's ace is having a tough time settling into this game. No outs in the inning as we turn the lineup over. And back to Kayla Kowalik, who drew the first of two first inning walks against Williams. Ninety two base hits in the regular season, the most in the history of the program. Long strike, 0 oh, 2. That finds its way into the first row. John Crop Stadium in Lexington allowed to have 50% capacity. And in the state of Kentucky into late May, those numbers will go up to 75% and eventually 100% capacity. The 0-2, a roll at a second, a tag, a throw to first, and it's high. And Kentucky gets one more as Smith comes across to score. And the Wildcats lead it 3-1. Well, even though Rachel Lewis is playing in, Smith is going on contact. She wisely tries to get two, a two for one. And Smith gets another run across, and Kentucky increases their lead. Now three runs on the board. Carol, if it's almost any other runner up the first base line, that play is probably a little bit easier for Lewis there because with Kowalik's speed, you know, Lewis is a, a solid second baseman. It looked like she rushed the throw a little bit. Well, and, and Stoddard is pretty solid on the other end as well. So that was just a pretty big collision with, with Stoddard running full speed. And but you're, you're absolutely right. Both strong players there. And, and, and to your point, Lewis had to get transfer and get rid of the ball quickly because of Kowalik's speed down the line. Whenever you have to rush yourself as an infielder, usually good things don't happen. Williams behind 2-0 on Spangler. Kowalik at first, still just one away. Spangler, the sixth batter of the inning for Kentucky. Spangler's one of those rare players that can pitch, play first base, play the outfield. Just, that's one thing Kentucky has done throughout Rachel Lawson's career is recruit pitchers who can hit pitchers who can play a variety of positions. It gives you a lot of flexibility in your lineup. If you know, Tatum Spangler, you mentioned it early, has worked her way up to the two spot in the lineup. Well, now you get creative about where you put her on defense. Ball in the dirt, Kowalik on the move. And she is out at second base. Caught stealing for only the third time this year. A huge out as Jordan Rudd makes a great throw. And this throw is tailing toward Kowalik, toward the first base line. And a tough tag there right on the head. No other choice for Rachel Lewis, just putting the tag down quickly. But unfortunately for Kowalik, it does go to her head. She is out. A little momentum shift here in the inning for Northwestern. 3-2 to Spangler. Swing and a miss, strike three. So in back-to-back -back pitches, they get a throw them out, strike them out, ends the inning. A tough one for Northwestern as Kentucky plates three. Well, Jordan Rudd throws out one of the best st base stealers in the country to end the inning. Kentucky's on top.
this is the party that every player wants to be at. It's going to be passionate softball for sure. Back to crown a national champion for the first time since 2019. They get to chase history here. Women's College World Series back in Oklahoma City. It all starts Thursday, June 3rd, 12 Eastern, live on ESPN. And we are underway in the top of the third in Lexington. Kentucky has answered a Northwestern strike with three runs of their own. Mike Cousins, Carol Bruggeman, so glad you're along with us. And it's back to the top of the lineup here for Northwestern. Now as Autumn Humes has a little bit of room to work with, she gave up a solo home run to Maeve Nelson to start the second. And is trying to get Schellmeyer retired for the second time today. Northwestern would like nothing more to get this top part of the lineup on base. They come into this game 25th in the country in stolen bases. They love to run bases, push the envelope. And a bit of an unsettling bottom of the second with some unusual plays. Took a little bit for Danielle Williams to find her footing in the circle. But they get a caught stealing its second, a strikeout to get out of the inning. And if they can get Schellmeyer aboard here, you've got great hitters behind her and Lewis, Rudd, and then Newport. For this team that started off really hot, 18 and two to open the year. Then they went seven and 12, so a little bit of up and down as they won the three of four against Nebraska in the final weekend of the regular season here in the NCAA tournament for the third straight year. Well, in the Big Ten, like a lot of conferences across the country, the ACC, the Pac-12, played a four game series against an opponent and that is a whole different dynamic it's 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 an emotional roller coaster it's about controlling your emotions and energy throughout four games a lot of at bats against pitchers a flare for Koffel she was playing in retreats and makes the catch retiring Schellmeyer and it seems like most coaches you talk to we're optimistic about going into the season, playing those four games, saying, well, we don't know what this year is going to look like. We don't know if we're going to have a postseason. Let's load up on the conference games. Now, in retrospect, a lot of them probably say, wow, that was really exhausting and really difficult. You know what? Three game series weren't all too bad. Well, you're right. You go back to October, September and October. Every coach in the country was just hoping we could have a season. And when you're making decisions about your schedule at that point, when you knew you could contain a little bit within your conference, that's why those decisions were made. But you're absolutely right. Once you get into that type of a schedule and you're, you're a hitter and you're facing the same pitchers over and over and you're a pitcher and you're trying to get the same hitters out over and over, it's really, it was a battle of wills and a mental test more than anything. One ball and two strikes here on Lewis. We saw that great tag she made at second base. Kate Drohan told us about how one of the players she studied extensively playing second base, Javi Baez of the Cubs, a Gold Glove Award winner, all-star a couple times, and the way he covers the bag. And she had to reach back across her body, got Kowalik on the helmet to get the second out in Kentucky's second. And a starter in every game of her Northwestern career. She has just been steady and solid from the minute she put on a Northwestern uniform. Was a leadoff hitter for a while throughout her career, also a three hitter. Now Coach Drohan loves her in the two spot. You know, that, that two spot in the batting order has really evolved over the last decade in softball. It traditionally was a sacrifice bunt hitter, or a true slapper, someone who could just move the leadoff hitter into scoring position. And now if you look 
at all 64 teams playing in the postseason. And you look who's hitting in the two spot in their lineup. It'd be hard to find that it's not the best hitter on the team. Hey off pitch and the 50th of the day from Humes ends up in the bleachers and still 3-2. Plenty of postseason experience for Lewis as well. They reached their regional title game in 2018. Went to Supers at Oklahoma in 2019. 3-2 once more. Upstairs, ball four. Leadoff runner is on, and let's go to studio for another update. Let's go to the Athens region, shall we, my cousins? Duke's Caroline Jacobson at the dish, and this would be a solo shot to left, and we will see you later. That puts the Blue Devils up 2-0 over UNC Greensboro. Still the score, top of the third. Cousins, back to you. First real speed threat of the day aboard. Rachel Lewis led the Big Ten in stolen bases. She's on at first, 28 of 29 this year. And Jordan Rudd follows her at the plate. Kayla Kowalik has thrown out three base runners all season long, but just 19 successful steals against her. Rudd to shallow left. Koffel chases, zips one on over to first, keeping Lewis close, two down. Well, we've seen several flares out there to short so far, Carol. What does that tell you about the way Humes is working these Northwestern hitters? We were both kind of thinking the same thing there, <laughs> Mike. Humes has really settled in after she gave up the home run. You know, just has given up one hit since then. And she's really stretching the zone, the inside, outside part of the zone, not allowing Northwestern to really barrel up the ball. And when you work both sides of the plate like that, you can't pick one side of the plate and, and just look for the pitch in that part of the zone. She may not come there. So, so far she's really stretched that zone, stretched the plate, plate 17 inches across and she's hitting that 17th inch. Lewis on the move and she's in, successfully stealing her 29th base in 30 tries. do is just a matter of time and Kowalik doesn't get herself situated very quickly not a great transition back there for Kowalik sitting back on her heels just a little bit and that results in a throw in the dirt and an easy steal for Lewis Newport one of the more difficult outs you'll see in this regional Kate Rohan says I call her the unicorn because of what she can do in the circle, what she can do in the outfield, and her ability to drive in runs on top of that. Now, Coach said, I don't know if I can think of anybody who does what she does, pitching, outfield, hitting. Although the other name that came to mind for me was Valerie Cagle at Clemson. That's a good name. I agree with you 100%. The ACC freshman and player of the year this year for the Tigers in her first full season, helping them into the postseason. Three and two now here on Newport, representing the tie and run for Northwestern. Swing and a miss, strike three. Huge pitch chasing up and away from Northwestern's cleanup hitter. Humes with the strikeout ends the inning. Autumn Humes feeling good in the circle, Kentucky. Leads. Rachel Lawson's Kentucky team up 3-1 over Northwestern. Coach, this is the fifth straight year that you're hosting a regional going back to 2016. What's it mean for your team to start off the postseason here at home? Well, it's just such a big deal because we have a great fan base here. And, you know, just to be able to play in front of them one more time is really special for us. Well, Coach, Kayla Kowalik having an unbelievable season on offense. You've been her coach now for quite a while. Where have you seen the biggest jump in her game and what's what's led to this performance this season? 
Well, you know, this year she's she's doing something. She's hitting home runs. I mean, I think she had 12 or something like that, which is pretty impressive for a leadoff. But she can also drop a bunt on you. So defensively, she creates a lot of matchup problems. Rachel, thanks. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Well, we certainly heard the enthusiasm of the crowd already. We welcome those of you coming over from the SEC Network with rain, unfortunately, a part of the postseason picture here as we go from May into June. Mike Cousins along with Carol Bruggeman, the former Division I coach, Kentucky and Northwestern here in the last of the third, first game of this Lexington Regional. And Lauren Johnson successfully bunts her way aboard. The number three hitter laying down the bunt. Yeah, you don't see too many people in that spot in the lineup. There's not even a play for the Northwestern defense as she softens her touch on the ball. It spins in the dirt, and she has great speed to beat that out for the infield hit. The freshman Koffel came here to Kentucky as one of the highest rated recruits in the history of the program. Was a two-time Indiana Gatorade Player of the Year. And in her first season, second team All-SEC and a starter every game at shortstop. And that is so difficult to do as a coach. You bring freshmen in, no matter how talented they are, the speed of the game is so much faster from the high school travel ball level to the college level. And especially when you're in decision-making positions like shortstop, catcher, of course, pitcher is, is a whole whole unique situation in and of itself. But for Aaron Koffel to be the everyday starter at shortstop and to play at a high level and to continue to improve just says a lot about her talent. What Rachel Lawson said about her that really stood out was that, and, and this is hard to find in a college freshman, let alone in an adult in the professional world. As someone who, who takes criticism, she as a freshman player takes criticism, and it's just information to her. It is not an attack on her as a player, not an attack on her as a person. She absorbs it, uses it to make herself better, and welcomes that information, knowing that her success leads to team success. I think if every coach in the country had players like that, they'd have permagrin all day long. <laughs> Just speaks a lot to her ability to, you know, kind of separate that emotion out of it and, and take that information and get better. And, you know, she's going to have a tremendous career, already having a great freshman season. But when you think about Erin Koffel and, and her advancement and her improvement over the next few years, she's going to be a force to be reckoned with within the SEC. She went like she was hitting a wedge on the golf course and chased that pitch downstairs. Looked like it might have been ball four instead. It's out number one. The Women's College World Series back in Oklahoma City starting June 3rd, 12 Eastern, live on ESPN. And for more information, go to NCAA.com, the official home for all 90 NCAA championships. This is just the first step in the road to Oklahoma City. We start with 64 teams, and over the course of just a couple days, we will be down to 16. 16 sites of four teams each. And then next weekend, 16 sites, or rather eight sites, with just 16 teams remaining and playing a best two out of three. This bracket here out of four teams is a double elimination bracket. So the winner here, goes on to face either Notre Dame or Miami, Ohio tomorrow. And then the losers will drop into the losers bracket to play each other there. Throw on to second, and Rudd has done it again. She gets Johnson, who was 12 for 15 on the base pass this year. Quite a defensive start for the Northwestern catcher. And what makes this even more special, it's off a changeup from Danielle Williams. And she still throws one of the fastest base runners on Kentucky's team out by more than two steps, showing you her transition and strong arm behind the plate.
So Williams and Rudd now have the opportunity to team up in back-to-back -back innings to catch a runner trying to swipe second and then retire the batter and end the inning. Well, when you have a catcher like Jordan Rudd who can throw out would-be base stealers more often than not, it's a game changer. It's a momentum shifter within the inning. Throw down to first, completes the strikeout, and the inning is over. Williams faces just three, keeps it a two-run contest. It's time for our Capital One rewarding performance. It's the Kentucky second after they went down one nothing. They put three on the board to take the lead. And just did it with a lot of pressure, a lot of short game, staying aggressive on the Bates pass. Riley Smith with the single up the middle to score two more. And Kentucky took the lead and has not looked back. They have an opportunity to add to that lead here in the fourth. Getting their first taste of competition outside of the Big Ten this year. Northwestern third in their league behind Michigan, which went a very impressive 36 and six, and Minnesota as well. And the run across for Northwestern, a Maeve Nelson solo home run on a ball that she walloped over the wall in left field leading off the second. And Nelson here leads off in the fourth for Northwestern. A lot of talented players on the Northwestern roster, not just in softball, you've got an Olympic hopeful, we'll tell you about later. Maeve Nelson, also an opera singer. Kate Drohan says, yeah, I've heard her sing. She's got a pretty good Ave Maria. A check on the 0-2. She holds up one and two. Well, we expect a battle from these teams. If you just go back the last full season of softball we had when we had the postseason 2019 both of these teams advanced to a super regional so they know how to as coach Drohan said when you get punched you got to punch back in the postseason one hopper gobbled up Koffel on to Peyton one out Koffel so smooth, a little short hop right into her glove, stays nice and low, gets her feet underneath her, gets her feet in rhythm. And in the infield, defense starts with your feet. And Koffel, one of the best, at getting her feet underneath her, keeping them in motion, made that play look easy. Zedak sends it into the seats for strike one. Carol, have you ever driven around Chicago? I've sat in my car a lot around Chicago <laughs> and driven around a lot around Chicago. I have. Proximity is a relative thing, right? If, if you're 33 miles away from Lexington, you may not sit in very much traffic. But where Angela Zedak went to high school, Marist High School, within Chicago's city limits, it's on the city's southwest side. However, if you are driving from there to Evanston, the campus for Northwestern, if you are doing it when the sun is up, it will probably take you a lot longer than 33 minutes to get there. Anybody who has lived in Chicago or if you've had to drive in the city during the day, you know the traffic can be a bear. Zedak soars that into left field, and there's out number two. I say that as a, as a former resident of the city, that if I ever had to get out to O'Hare Airport northwest of downtown, you better leave really early or have a helicopter to get there, one of the two. <laughs> that sounds like a three cup of coffee trip right there. <laughs> yes, and a lot of patience as well. And you'll see plenty of journalists with a Northwestern degree. One of those hopefuls, Sydney Supley, who's been chronicling her own team's adventures 
whether through the written word or a video series she did in the off season. As they got out onto the field and she and her teammates would walk the base paths and she would interview them. As good a practice as any with the people you know best. Kayla Kowalik taking a moment. You know, we saw her get caught stealing last inning and the tag went to her head and now gets a foul tip also in the head. Her success has not gone there. Unfortunately, it's been a glove and a foul tip that have gone there today for Kowalik. Couple of bounces to the right side. Humes has settled in a 1-2-3 inning. She's retired five in a row. We'll chat with Kate Drohan, the Northwestern head coach, when we come back. Kentucky up 3-1 over Northwestern. Northwestern's head coach, Kate Drohan. What's it like for you to play a team outside your league for the first time this year? Um, it was fun to prepare for this one. You know, it was, it was, uh, it was a good season, but, we're, but we were definitely ready for the postseason. Well, Coach, uncharacteristic start for Danielle Williams in the circle today. A couple walks, a couple hit batters, just very uncharacteristic. What are you seeing out there from her? Well, I think she's got to settle into this game, and I think she has. Um, but we're giving up some we're giving up some runs on some ground balls. We need to sharpen up defensively as well. Kate, always fun to chat. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Well, a big smile from Williams, who got strikeouts to end the second and to end the third. Three runs across in the second. That's the difference right now as Kentucky has the lead over Northwestern here in game one of this Lexington Regional. Mike Cousins, Carol Bruggeman, the executive director of the NFCA. So glad you're with us on a picture perfect day with game number two on deck. Notre Dame and Miami, Ohio, ready to go head to head. Abernathy, Humes, and Smith, six, seven, eight, all due up here for UK. Fifth straight year hosting a regional for them, and they've made supers in the last four postseasons. Every time they've hosted a regional, they've won it, dating back to 2013, 14, and then. 2016 and on with last year's season cut short. No 2020 postseason. And I think what's even more impressive about that run with Kentucky in the postseason at home is you know, they haven't lost a game in the last three regionals and just have been tough to beat at home at this time of year. Yeah, the 18 and 19 regionals outscored their opponents a combined 56 to 6. There goes Abernathy, one away with Humes coming up. And we'll check in with the studio for an update. Thanks, Mike. Knoxville Regional on ESPNU. It's James Madison and Liberty, and the Duke's Odyssey Alexander is dealing. She delivers the strikeout here to get out of a bases-loaded jam that would take out Savannah Chanel to end the inning. No score, top of the fourth. Mike, back to you. First time today that Williams has retired the leadoff batter for Kentucky. Starting off with the ground out by Abernathy. And it's Humes the pitcher. One big key for Northwestern was they said, we need to keep the ball in the park. So far that's been the case. They even keep the ball on the infield, but they don't get the out. As that one went off of Dunlap over to Nelson and Humes beats it out. Well, Humes times this one up perfectly. It just, Mac Dunlap is one of the best third basemen in the Big Ten. It gets on her very quickly. And Maeve Nelson does her best to still throw out Humes, but too long of a throw. Kentucky has a base runner. Infield single for Humes. And Vanessa Nesby in as the pinch runner for Kentucky.
Riley Smith, first pitch, out of play, strike one. So it's Nesby with one out. And one and one the count on Smith, who reached on a second inning single and later came around to score the third of those three runs. Carol, we documented the recent postseason success for Kentucky and how good things have been for Rachel Lawson now in her 14th year. And hearing her tell the story of, of the ascent of this program from when she took over to now is quite a journey. That's to the circle and to second for one. And Lewis with the turn, not in time, two away. But about how, you know, she said, we turned storage rooms into indoor batting cages and so on. And we've built things up. We've got a great facility now. The question is now, it's about when you get to this level, keeping the pressure on, but they welcome it of not only getting to the postseason, but succeeding in the postseason. Yeah, and you look at that, those, those numbers, really eye-popping numbers of what she has been able to do during her tenure. And it has been a lot of hard work, a lot of belief. And the big word that, that she used a lot, and I can't agree more, is organization. Just organizing practices, organizing a culture, how we're going to do things. And... It's one thing to kind of climb that mountain and turn the corner. And, you know, as she mentioned, oh, everybody's cheering when you have your first no-hitter, and everybody's cheering when you, you know, have your first run rule victory. But now it's it's expected, and and uh, she has earned that. There goes Stoddard on to first base. So it's two on and two out for UK with a two-run lead here in the last of the fourth. Williams loves to throw the off-speed pitch on the inside corner. Stoddard does get her knee out there a little bit, but it is in the batter's box. So a couple of uncharacteristic early walks, a couple of hit batters for Williams. An emblem of control in the circle with finding the strike zone. And that's a big plate appearance there because you had the chance to get the third out of the inning, avoid facing Kowalik, one of the nation's best hitters. And so she comes up here for the third time, has already brought a run home, and that's going to deserve a strategy session in the circle. Pitching coach Michelle Gascoigne, former great at Oklahoma. Part of the national championship team there actually pitched the championship game in 2013 for Oklahoma going out to talk to Danielle Williams trying to get her a little back on track today this has been a very uncharacteristic outing for Danielle Williams not the amount of hits that she's given up but you know just a couple walks she's had two hit batters a wild pitch just her lack of control, and, and she typically has good command of all of her pitches. And it's been the bottom part of the order, the six through nine hitters, that have really been her nemesis. One on one on Kowalik. I love her Twitter bio. It says 25% athlete, 45% caffeine. 4% Scorpio and 26% Rage. <laughs> now, the athlete coming to play today. Ball in the dirt. And the runners are on the move. So it's Smith over to third. Stoddard up to second. And a base hit could score two for UK. And Rudd just tries to pick the ball with her backhand instead of getting her body in front of that ball. And it kicks away from her. Rudd is typically very good at blocking the ball and keeping the ball in front. Well, that's one thing about Danielle Williams. She gets a lot of swings and misses, especially at her off-speed offerings in the dirt. It's a lot of swings at, at non-strikes, and Rudd is a, is a big piece of that puzzle. Her battery mate able to keep the ball in front. Wasn't able to come up with it there. 
Kowalik reaches for one low. Williams wins the battle and retires Kayla Kowalik to end the inning, stranding two and keeping it a 3-1 ball game. It's time to go to the fifth, and Northwestern, the number four seed, has work to do down by a pair. NCAA softball championship presented by Capital One. This weekend, a huge sports lineup. ESPN with the final two rounds of the PGA championship from Kiowa Island. Saturday night, 8 Eastern, ABC, the NBA playoffs. Celtics and Nets get going. Over on ESPN, the junior welterweight unification bout between Jose Ramirez and Josh Taylor. And on Sunday morning, ESPN 2 with the Monaco Grand Prix. And here in Lexington in the fifth, it's a leadoff single for Nikki Cochran, who comes up with a clutch base hit. The last person to have a base hit for this squad was her back in the second inning. And so Northwestern gets the leadoff hitter aboard here after five straight had been retired. And they are off and working against Autumn Humes. Pinch runner so over at first base. That's Emma Bartz. It's been so impressive about Northwestern as they continue to attack early in the count. And the first time they see a good pitch from Autumn Humes, they are not leaving the bat on their shoulder. They are continuing to attack. Mac Dunlap lays it down to her counterpart, Miranda Stoddard over at third. The tag at second, and Cochran, rather, was off the bag. It was Bartz off the bag, and she got tagged out. Oh, a crucial mistake at second. Well, just when you think Northwestern's gonna put a runner in scoring position, Emma Bartz gets caught watching the play off the bag and Emmy Blaine throws a perfect strike to Koffel, who is fired up. Huge momentum shift for Kentucky. And just like that, in the blink of an eye, two away, and a chance for back-to-back -to -back three batter innings for Humes. And lesson learned there for base runners. You have to know where the ball is at all times. And if you don't know, get to the base. Another beautiful bunt laid down third base side. This time it's Shellmeyer who works her way aboard. Two out base runner. We've seen some excellent bunts today from both teams. And this is the this is the play from Mac Dunlap who gets the bunt down. But look at Bart. She's she's caught off the bag looking to see what happened at first base. Should have stayed right on the bag there. If you do not know where the ball is, stay on the base. Carol, there have been innumerable times this year where we've watched the end of an inning, the final out is made, let's say, on, at first base, and then immediately if a runner's coming around third, the third out has already been recorded. The first baseman throws home anyway, just out of instinct to make that play. You don't want to leave it up to the umpire. And that right there was a great example of leaving no stone unturned defensively by Kentucky. And it shows you how important Quick releases, good throws, being in position on defense really are. That led for, by Koffel being in good position and Blaine with a good heads up play, throwing a perfect strike over to Koffel. You know, defense can turn the tide of a game in a second. Lewis has flied to center, got a free pass in the third, and was stranded at second after a stolen base. Two-two, <laughs> swing and a miss, strike three. The inning is over as Humes registers her third strikeout. And out on the base paths, their second, and Lewis leaves Shellmeyer stranded.
playing softball in February here in Clearwater. The amount of great matchups that we have, great teams here on Parallel. We have some of the best talent in the country. The best ticket, the hardest ticket to get in town. If you are a softball fan, this is a place that you want to be. Among so many of the things that will eagerly welcome back, it'll be one of those, the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational, February 17th to the 20th, where we'll see some of the best softball teams in the country get the early part of their seasons going. My cousins, Carol Bruggeman, glad to have you with us. Danielle Williams in the circle. The only run she's allowed today came across in the second. Her team threatened last inning, but just 19 pitches thrown by her counterpart, Autumn Humes, over the last couple of frames. Those have been quick ones. And Tatum Spangler leads off. Number two spot after Williams retired Kowalik to end the fourth and get out of a big jam. Typically, Williams works at a very quick tempo. She's very steady. She has pitched, even though she's just in her second full season in a Northwestern uniform, a lot of stress innings as well as she retires Spangler for the first out of the inning. Gets a lot of ground ball outs because of her ability to keep the ball down in the zone, mix speeds. Seems to have started to really settle into this game. Took her a little while, but she has so many tools in her toolbox that she's able to call on those, switch, switch her mindset, make things happen. Here's Lauren Johnson to face Williams. And you can't ask for much more out of a pitcher to step in after being the National Freshman of the Year in 2019. And the first Big Ten player to win that award. She threw a perfect game earlier this year against Iowa. Sorry, Carol. <laughs> Just the fifth in Northwestern's history against your alma mater. And following in the footsteps of her sister Krista, who played at Northwestern, graduated in 2017. And in that 2019 season where she won the National NFCA Division I Freshman of the Year Award. She also was in the hitting lineup every day, and now Northwestern's lineup, she still can hit, has hit this season, but Northwestern's hitting lineup is so strong that she's, she's not relied on to hit. She doesn't have to hit within that lineup and focus a little more on pitching. Comes back full after going to a three ball count for the sixth time today. Despite having the lead, Kentucky without an extra base hit so far today. And that remains true with two up and two down. Retired here in the last of the fifth. So far, just four base hits for Kentucky, all of them singles. But a powerful bat, Aaron Koffel, who's shined so far today defensively at short, comes up with two down. Yeah, and it's it's uncharacteristic for Kentucky. And they played 52 games this season, and they have hit had an extra base hit in 49 of those. So credit to Danielle Williams, keeping the ball down, mixing speeds, not really allowing Kentucky to get full extension, drive the ball to the gaps. As you take a look at Erin Koffel and what she's done, Kentucky freshman records in a lot of power categories, home runs, RBI. Just don't see that from a freshman, especially in the SEC, very often, but she has been consistent all season long. One of the goals for Northwestern, don't let the ball leave the yard. So far that's been the case. But a few quirks and oddities on the base paths today have helped make the difference. As 
there's always scouting to be done. The winner here faces the winner of game number two, Notre Dame out of the ACC, and Miami, Ohio, champions of the Mid-American Conference, scheduled for a first pitch around 2.30 or thereabouts, depending on the conclusion of this game, available for you on the ESPN app. Williams gets a ground ball, and it's called foul. Dunlap gave a good effort for it, but it took a westward course, and they'll do 3-2 again. Williams loves to come inside to right-handed batters as a curveball, and Dunlap gets her glove out there, and so the judgment is, where is the ball? Did the ball hit off Dunlap's glove? And if it did, was it on the foul line? Good effort over there in the hot corner by Dunlap. 3-2 once more, and she rings up Koffel. Strike three call. Her third inning-ending strikeout of the afternoon. Danielle Williams is painting the corners. Her team's coming to bat. They need two to tie it up. Welcome back to the 2021 NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. How about this? Don't miss a minute of the action from the regionals as we take you to the best live action on the seven innings live show on the ESPN app. You'll get every game, every big moment on the road to the Women's College World Series only on the ESPN networks. That is from lunch until well after bedtime, depending on when you go to sleep with seven innings live to take you around. Think of it as your red zone for college softball. In the sixth inning, a long run for Tatum Spangler in right field. She crosses the chalk and retires Jordan Rudd. Spangler, you've seen her hit from the left side. You've seen her pitch from time to time throughout the season. But look at her range in the outfield. Showing you her speed to track down the foul ball and most importantly, the first out of the inning. So talk about efficiency. Over the last 21 pitches, Autumn Humes has gotten seven outs. She had a one, two, three, fourth, faced just four batters in the fifth. And now here, fortunately for her, faces the biggest power threat in this lineup, Morgan Newport with nobody on base. And Newport with a soft roller to the right side is retired. So the cleanup hitter for the Wildcats in purple and white is a quiet 0 for 3. Their lone run came on one big swing. Maeve Nelson said, see ya. No doubter, as long as it stayed fair, and it did, as she hit her fifth home run of the year back in the second. And that is it, all that Northwestern has scraped across thus far. And Northwestern is actually out hitting Kentucky five to four. With Kentucky's base running, their ability to take that extra base. We've seen them be overly aggressive. It's paid off for them. Any ball in the dirt, they've been able to advance 60 feet, been able to use the short game to move runners into scoring position. It's paid off for them. Like Williams on the other side, Humes has had a couple of inning-ending strikeouts. Part of her tally of three of those today, three total strikeouts. As she works for a second one, two, three frame in the last three innings.
0-2 takes a big, comfortable bounce for Stoddard at third, and the inning is over. Humes dispatches Northwestern 1-2-3. NCAA softball championship presented by Capital One. Mike Cousins, Carol Bruggeman. This game has been decided on the base paths. Riley Smith with the single. One run scores to tie the game. Second one would have been thrown out. Looks like the runner's given a clean look at the plate. Obstructions called. The run scores. And Mac Dunlap with the bunt. But Emma Bartz gets caught off the base as Kentucky takes advantage with a sharp defensive play. And that's where we are, even though Northwestern has out hit Kentucky, those mistakes have allowed Kentucky to take advantage and they lead this game three to one. Mallory Payton leading it off 0 for 2 for the first baseman, who's worked her way back from a hand injury that she suffered in that big series against Alabama at the end of March as they took a pair in that series. It was out a couple of weeks before she could come back defensively, and then even a little bit longer, before she was able to come back to the plate. Danielle Williams in the circle for Northwestern, over 100 pitches today. Has she looked herself, Carol? I would say no. She has definitely settled in and looked sharp, more sharp the second half of this game. Hitting her corners as she did right there. That's a typical pitch from Williams up in the zone, really paints the corner. That has her off speed working, but early in this game gave up two early walks in the first inning. She has a couple of hit batters. But the last two batters she's faced has delivered beautiful strikeout pitches to retire back to back batters. Five in a row, one down. Let's go to the studio for an update. Thank you, Mike. Knoxville Region on ESPNU. James Madison in Liberty, and it's the Dukes already up 1-0 here. Madison Nyokis at the plate. She knocks a triple, which would bring in Kylie Thress from first to score. Liberty just tied it up. All knotted up at two. Back to you, Mike. All right. Love to follow the action around the country this time of year. It is a, I'm going to coin a new phrase here. It is overwhelmingly fun to track 64 teams in action over the course of three days and see who's gonna earn their spot into a Super Regional as we go from 64 teams down to just 16 over the course of this weekend. And every time you, you, you check another score, you hear another update, you think, oh yeah, I really wanna keep my eye on that game. The Liberty James Madison game is going to be a battle and it's, it's, it's proving to be so. Both two really good teams from the same part of the country getting a chance to battle it out in Knoxville. Saw some good games already starting last night in the Tempe Regional. We saw home runs early in the first game there. I mean, I think, you know, the first batter of the postseason. Here right. <laughs> solo home run. It doesn't get more exciting than that. Well, the unusual afternoon continues here for Williams with the early walks. She had hit Stoddard in the nine spot twice, and now Abernathy is hit by the pitch. That pitch clearly in the box. Remember, the batter does not have to move out of the way if they're in the batter's box. That is their territory. Pitcher kind of has a, a stay out of here sign, and that pitch did get in the batter's box, and Abernathy is now on first base, a steal threat for Kentucky. Hume's one of the captains of this team. Started off her career at the Division II level. They're now in her fourth and final season with Kentucky. And when that pitch has been working for Williams, it has been big whiffs from the Wildcats. I mean, it's one of the best in the country. Her motion looks like the ball is going to be coming 65 miles an hour, which takes just enough off. And typically it also has this tumbling or this downspin on it, so it drops off the table. 
And more times than not, she doesn't even throw it for a strike. It's in the dirt, but it looks so good. It's tough for hitters to lay off. And we have seen her use that more in the second half of this game. I think it has a lot to do with her efficiency. Her tempo has picked up. She likes to work quickly. She's picked that up in the second part of the game as well and, and really has settled in. Humes high in the air, deep right field. Newport to the warning track. So that was given a good charge all the way almost to the wall. She's retired on a long second out. Now we haven't even seen many balls in the outfield against Northwestern. Newport heads back to the warning track. Wynn holds it up a little bit. No, after that second inning when they scored three, they have not had a lot of success at the plate. That finds the bullpen down the right field line. Strike one on Smith. Williams has retired six of the last seven with the exception of Abernathy over at first who was hit by the pitch. And I just said it earlier, but I love the mentality of both of these teams. They are not sitting back on their heels. They are attacking. They're attacking the strike zone from the circle. These hitters are not leaving the bat on their shoulders. They are swinging the bat. And they have been aggressive on the base pass. I mean, you better, you better be able to play defense in the postseason as you see Miami getting ready to, to warm up and play the game right after this game. The Red Hawks from Oxford, Ohio. Second highest scoring team in the country, only behind Oklahoma, will be great challengers for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, who have a hitter similar to Kayla Kowalik at the top of their lineup, Abby Sweet, the top hitter in the ACC this season. And we're also gonna see, you know, th those are some of the headlines, some great pitching in that game. Courtney Veerstra, top 10 in strikeouts in the country for Miami and whether it's Holloway or Tid who takes the circle for Notre Dame. Two excellent upperclassmen pitchers there for the Irish. 2-1 from Williams is a called strike two. Well, as you mentioned, and we, we talked about earlier this week talking to the coaches, I mean, Miami is leads the country in terms of victories this season. I mean, that team knows how to win. This, this regional has a little bit of everything. Sharply to short. Lewis gets the easy out at second base, and the inning is over. Clock is ticking, pressure's on for Northwestern as they look to avoid the loser's bracket down two. The NCAA Softball Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Back in Lexington, top of the seventh, the last chance for Northwestern, which has out-hit Kentucky. The Wildcats in blue with just four singles today, but they scored three back in the second inning. And now it's Autumn Humes looking to polish off a complete game. She's been mightily efficient in the circle. Kate Trohan squad six, seven, and eight due up to the plate here, looking to keep things going. Angela Zedak, 0 for 2, leads it off. Nothing and one to start. I'm very impressed with Autumn Tunes. You mentioned her efficiency, just 87 pitches as she tries to close this one out with the complete game. But her defense has been very sharp behind her as well. They've played very clean, no errors on the game. Some real crisp throws around the infield. And that's what it takes in the postseason, a solid pitching performance, solid defense, and some timely hitting. And, and Kentucky has had that just scoring in the one inning. And really two runs on the single. She's allowed just two hits over the last four innings. Went one, two, three in both the fourth and the sixth. 
And ahead one and two on the sophomore Zedak. That's in the air center field. Abernathy one down as Humes is within a couple outs of her 13th complete game of the season. So Kentucky eyeing that winner's bracket tomorrow. And Miami, Ohio, Notre Dame coming up next. That is available for you on the ESPN app, streaming on your phone or computer, your tablet. And the loser goes into the elimination game. As we have a big day tomorrow, three games and one, and if necessary, two games to wrap things up on Sunday. Supley, like Zedak, who preceded her hitless in two at bats. And today's game is all about getting to the winner's bracket. You know, nobody's going to be eliminated today, but you sure make your road a little bit easier if you can win on the first day of the regional. You get into that winner's bracket game, and, and I really call that game tomorrow where the winners meet the money game, because if you can win that game, you sit around the rest of the day and watch everybody play everybody and kind of, you know, knock each other out. And you just need one more to punch that ticket to Super Regional. So today is all about staying in that winner's bracket. Autumn Humes with another strikeout. And Kentucky is now one out away from that happening. And Humes has been so efficient today, running the ball through the zone. This is just a pitch that's got a little late movement on it on the outside part of the plate. A swing and a miss from Supley. So four strikeouts for Humes. She's retired six in a row since a fifth inning two out bunt single from Skyler Schellmeyer. And facing the bottom of the order here. Trying to deal Northwestern a loss. Well, I think what's been equally impress is, impressive is just, just the one free pass from Autumn Hume. So going a complete game, she had one walk back in the third inning. But since then, no free passes. Ball and a strike to Cochran. And now Northwestern is down to its final strike. Big Blue Nation behind the home team as the 1 2 is turned into a souvenir. And Humes has the opportunity to finish this game under 100 pitches. Something else important to Kentucky is they're going to rely heavily on Humes in this regional. She can keep her pitch down count manageable. And the more Kentucky can stay in the winner's bracket, that bodes favorably not only for Autumn Humes in the circle for their entire team. And her 100th pitch of the day is fly down the line to left. Diving try would have been dangerous there for Johnson with the short wall encroaching on her path. So Cochran with a valiant fight here. Trying to extend the last stand for Northwestern. Six in a row set down, one more to get. 2-2 two, two, into the gap, right center field. Northwestern's not done yet. Cochran with speed into second base. And the Wildcats down to their final strike. We'll bring the tying run to the plate. 
And Cochran is three for three in this game as she barrels one up. This is what we expect from Northwestern. They know how to punch back. They are going to fight every pitch, every out. And Cochran has a stand-up double. Senior Mac Dunlap. And she rolls it to Koffel at short side on throw, bounces away. Cochran coming around, she scores. Dunlap is into second base. Northwestern down by one with the tying run at second. Mac Dunlap just makes something happen here, and Koffel could have tagged. The runner, Cochran, for the final out of the game, but elects to go to first base, makes a very difficult throw on the run across her body. It gets away from Peyton at first base, and now Northwestern has an opportunity to tie this game with a runner in scoring position. Couple of squads loaded with postseason experience. The only freshman in the starting lineup today has the ball hit to her on the final, or the potential final play of the game. Instead, elects to throw to first. The lineup turns over, and it's Skyler Schellmeyer with the tying run, Dunlap at second. Northwestern down to its final out. And just a couple batters ago, they were down to their final strike as Cochran turned away two-strike pitch after two-strike pitch from Humes. A 1-0, a chopper back to the circle, throw to first, ball game over. Heartbeats collectively slow down around Big Blue Nation as the Kentucky Wildcats defeat the Northwestern Wildcats 3-2. Well, Humes takes the last out herself. And she fires a perfect strike over to Peyton to end the inning and got a one-run victory in the first game of this regional. And Humes goes the distance for the 13th time this year, strikes out four as she is our Capital One player of the game. Kentucky in the winner's bracket on their home field. They'll face the winner of our next game, Miami, Ohio, and Notre Dame. So on behalf of our entire crew, my partner, Carol Bruggeman, I'm Mike Cousins saying thanks for watching. Our next game available on the ESPN app. And up next for you right here, UCF and Auburn in the college softball postseason.